Beit Sherim is an ancient cemetery located within Galilee. Very close by is a natural cave. It had apparently fallen into disuse at the end of the 4th century and filled up partially with four or five feet of clay-like silt. In 1956, a bulldozer was taken in to clear the rubble, but what it would uncover can be seen as an enormous upart, an out-of-place artifact. It turned out to be a large ancient rectangular slab made from an unknown material. Because of its size, measuring 6.5 by 11 feet long, 18 inches thick and weighing in at over 9 tons, it was not surprisingly left where it lay. With a perfectly level surface, its origins were a mystery, yet alas, at the time, not a pressing one. However, in 1963, members of a joint expedition of the Corning Museum of Glass and the University of Missouri would bring to light a curious reality. While surveying the region for possible remains of ancient glass factories, someone suggested that the Bet Sharim slab might have been made of glass. A suggestion initially perceived as a joke. Amazingly, chemical analysis was indeed carried out, confirming that this enormous and extremely ancient slab was indeed made of glass. It is therefore believed that the Bet Sharim slab is a huge piece of first stage glass, meant to have been broken up and fashioned into objects somewhere else, that for some reason was abandoned right where it was made. In conclusion, several factors surrounding the existence of the slab are currently unexplainable. According to mainstream views surrounding the evolution of glassmaking, the production of such an enormous base material would have been simply impossible, requiring over 12 tons of raw materials, over 20 tons of furnace fuel, the maintaining of a temperature of over 1100 degrees centigrade for no less than five continuous days, finally producing a nine-ton slab of perfectly level, perfectly rectangular glass, clearly demonstrates the requirement of a highly advanced refinery with highly advanced technologies harnessed by a past civilization. Additionally, at the time of its discovery, only two other pieces of glass have ever been created that are larger. Both rest within the enormous telescopic mirrors of machines developed within the past century. It seems clear to us that the Beth Sharim slab is one of those rare gems that clearly demonstrates the past existence of a highly advanced, highly capable ancient civilization that once lived and was unfortunately lost here on Earth. There are places on our planet that still contain some astonishing ruins originating from a very distant antiquity. Quietly studied by academics the world over, and just as quietly dismissed as modern works, are from not-so-distant, more primitive ancestors. Or, if fated enough, attributed to natural activities by geologists, funded by the same infrastructure as that of the academic world, paid to explain the origins of the ruins of Earth to a particular already permitted timeline. Not only are these funded individuals directed to only attribute such sites to a certain timeline, but if they go against the grain by actually attributing them or sharing data contradicting such timelines, it is often thrown out and their funding ended, slowly drying up with their future opportunities in the field, as well as their prospects and ultimately their reputation. Regardless of this, facts do not lie. And the more one explores the anomalies we present here on our channel, the more one may find themselves coming to similar conclusions as we have regarding the illogical nature and often impossibility of these advanced ancient ruins having been created using now lost knowledge or technologies, once being the work of the academically claimed culprit. Siberia is indeed one of these places and due to the remote nature of some of the ruins found here, are easily dismissed, hidden from a modern world, battling to regain the truth regarding our past. Altai is an area that contains many ancient megaliths. So old, they are undeniably the legacy of a civilization now long lost to history. Yet this tremendous age is a double-edged sword, 
Not only could they eventually reveal, like done during current studies of the antiquities already covered on the channel, reveal that ruins found across the globe just don't date from a single civilization, but are, in fact, the work of separate civilizations who have presumably been and gone at different times, making the flourishment of man and, indeed, our eventual decline a cyclical occurrence. But due to tremendous age, can also be dismissed as nothing but mere geological features. This regardless of the still remaining highly eroded evidence that can be found at such sites, which is indeed indicative of artificial origins. Furthermore, there also exists a number of supposed hillsides that, just like the pyramids of Giza, have resisted the tests of time more successfully than their polygonal counterparts meaning their undeniable shape and alignments have survived long enough for them to stick out like sore thumbs, amongst a landscape which is unbalanced and predictably unaligned. A background made by nature, yet their angle of descent, their ridged edges, and ultimately their artificial nature still allows one to recognize them and identify them as not only places of interest, but ancient pyramids hidden from man for countless millennia, protected by mountain ranges and hostile, inhospitable climates, which our modern technology is slowly allowing us to rediscover, regardless of a modern academia who would rather we didn't. Additionally, not only can these artificial and highly intriguing features be found here, but also possible evidence to indicate how their creators came to an untimely demise possibly at the hands of immense heat and a possible natural disaster. Found within the nature reserve of Ergaki, among the western Sayan mountain range, is a feature that has rarely been seen, let alone photographed. An entire side of one of the mountains was, at some time within the distant past, turned to magma during an event yet to be understood. Turned to liquid magma, this stone flowed like liquid but only for a short period before re-solidifying. A relic from a disastrous event undoubtedly packed tremendous force. Yet, whether this is evidence of the event which decimated the ancient civilization responsible for Siberia's ruins is yet to be fully known. It is a place that is undoubtedly highly compelling. Hi guys, have you ever heard of Dendera Temple? Known as the Sixth Nome of Upper Egypt, it is one of the best preserved ancient temple complexes on Earth, and it bears the scars of what must have been the most frightening and destructive of events. An event that is ignored by the majority of modern academia. The complex spans some 40,000 square feet, and within the temple is some of the most well-preserved ancient artworks of anywhere in Egypt. Along with preserving the exquisite art and decorations, the temple also preserved evidence of something we were not taught about in history class. Upon the granite steps, which still lead to the temple's roof, in direct alignment with a small window cut into the thick stone wall, is evidence of severe melting. At one time in the temple's long life, the steps within were turned into liquid magma. What catastrophic event could lead to the melting of granite steps through a small window in the wall? Were such events commonplace, or was it the result of an accident? Is this why the ancient structures were built with such huge blocks of stone? Many have speculated that the Dendora Temple is built upon an even older site. Are the steps surviving remnants of this much earlier complex? Were they part of a structure that once witnessed a solar flare, perhaps? Or maybe a localized supernova? Many who have examined the steps and the surrounding area have speculated that nuclear blasts may have been detonated within ancient Egypt, or even before. The ancient site in India, for example, 10 miles west of Jodhpur, with radiation that was so intense the area is still highly dangerous. An ancient layer of radioactive ash was discovered that covers a 3 square mile area. Scientists investigating the site where a housing development was being built established that there was a very high rate of illnesses in the area. The levels of radiation were so high the Indian government eventually cordoned off the entire area. They later unearthed an ancient city, which shows strong evidence of an atomic blast dating back some 12,000 years, which destroyed most of the buildings and killed an estimated half a million people. Did nuclear war occur in our distant past? 
were these ancient structures which have stood the test of time actually built as bunkers? With melted steps and irradiated ancient cities found throughout the world, the evidence is certainly compelling. As always, thanks for watching guys, until next time, take care. Five miles south of Saqqara in Egypt, what was once an enormous structure, at one time in its distant past, was somehow turned into rubble from the top down. As if something made this once gigantic pyramid explode. Resting in a location away from normal tourist routes, it is a testament to Egypt's extremely mysterious history. Scholars believe the pyramid was probably built during the reign of the fourth dynasty king, named Neferu. It is believed by some that the pyramid may have been started by Neferu's predecessor, Huni. Although like the rest of Egypt's pyramids, no one really knows who built it, when or most importantly how. The original pyramid has been suspected by some to have been that of a normal shape, but at some time in its life had been stripped of its outer coating along with its top in what must have been a most dramatic of events. It now appears to sit on a hill created from the rubble of its outer skins. The theory that it was unfinished and collapsed in on itself can be proven inaccurate once one explores the place, especially the meticulously finished inner tunnel systems and the obliterated granite piled high around what remains of this once great structure. Whatever happened remains a mystery, and unless more people are made aware of such curiosities, they may remain mysteries forever. There are many places on our planet so remote or little mentioned that much of the world has never heard of said sites. And the Great Salbic Kurgan is one such example of an incredible ruin that has been largely forgotten or overlooked by modern academic study. Clearly of a Neolithic age, the thing which is most striking regarding the ruin is the sheer size of the megalithic blocks which make up the main structure. Claimed by many as the most majestic and mysterious ancient monument of southern Siberia, the mound is located in what is locally known as the so-called Siberian Valley of the Kings, where several thousand years ago, it is claimed that there existed a kingdom, one made up of a people once known as the Tagars. Thus, the age monument has been pinned on said culprits, with an age of around 2,300 to 2,500 years attributed to the site. The main earthwork is a stone square mound, 70 meters by 70 meters in size, as mentioned, huge slabs of Devonian sandstone. Some estimated as weighing as much as 50 to 70 tons were somehow once inexplicably delivered to the site from a quarry site of over 100 kilometers away, found upon the banks of the Yenisei River. It is believed that it was an ancient temple, and at a later date an ancient astronomical observatory which like most other Neolithic sites incorporates processional cycles in its alignment, showing the movement of the sun and the moon. As mentioned, it still remains a complete mystery as to what devices were once utilized for the importation and installation of these gigantic stones. At the corners and sides of the stone fences are deeply driven large meniers. All 23 stones are of an enormous sight. Measuring up to a height of 6 meters, they're clearly smoking guns flying in the face of upheld academic fallacies. The rare excavations and explorations noted as having been undertaken at the site note that before the construction of the giant earth embankment and its accompanying stone fence, there was a crypt of logs in its place, once in the form of a truncated pyramid. This whole crypt can be found inside the huge earthwork, preserved beneath, untouched yet covered with a thick layer of bark. The crypt had the height of 2.5 meters in depth of 2 meters of water covered the pit. It is claimed that around the burial zone, for a long time a strong anomaly has continually been observed. The study of these phenomena has indeed been engaged by scholars, but the pace of said explorations has been suspiciously slow paced. Who built the Great Salbic Kurgan? How were these huge stones transported to the site and once driven into the earth at the site? What is this quote, strong anomaly? More investigation and popularization of the site is desperately needed. It is a place which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care.